Hey, this is NYC Geek Society. John and Axel here. Uh, we just got finished watching the Tomb Raider panel. And it was too short. Yeah, it was too short. I wanted it to go on for like an hour. But um, I liked when asked like what the differences between the, the three games are. It's like in the first game, Lara was a survivor. Second Very game, naive. She, right. In the second game, she was like a hunter. And now this one, she's kind of the full height of her powers, so to speak. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this game because in the last game she just had like this, I don't know, this righteous like everything I do is the correct move. Yeah, yeah. I like what they said that like she kind of is impulsive, but up until now all of the choices that she's made had been the right choices, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but in this third game it seems that she makes mistakes, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, what was really fascinating uh, for both of us is they showed this scene just in the mocap suits, but between Lara and Jonah. And, uh, you know, I guess like something happens where, you know, I think I had seen parts of this scene before too. But yeah, it's like, where, oh, we have to do this. Well, no, what no. about the people? So, so I think there's this, I think the scene is like where the village is like, being destroyed or something because I think I've seen parts of this. I think they've shown it. Really? The, but um, here okay. they just showed it with the mocap suits and like, uh, you know, Lara kind of gets up and she finds Jonah and Jonah's like, we have to help these people and she's like, no, we have to go over after Trinity right now. I have, to, I'm the only one that could save them or, or you know, no, otherwise no one's safe and he just starts yelling at her saying, it, it, doesn't have to be just you and you're the one that caused all of this you know and it's just kind of interesting to think about how at times we could think about that we're the only ones that could do something you know that mm. <clears throat> that we have we could figure out a way of controlling or or making things better but sometimes you know the best thing you could do is is affect what's right in front of you first you know and Sometimes you just need to, like, save the person in front of you before you could save the world, you know? Mm. I thought that that was really interesting, and it gave both of us chills just watching it. See. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to all the, I don't know, all the mocap <coughs> scenes or the, the or all the cut scenes that will be in this game. I think it's going to be a treat. And the actors have mentioned that since they've worked together for so long, that there are just some gestures that they have between each other, like, oh, hey, you know, let's go this way. Right. And that sort of rapport only exists because they've been acting together for so long. And Right, they can improvise, yeah. and they were given the freedom to do so. Yeah, the director um, pretty much allowed them to improvise at the end of the scene. So, for example, like, they'd have... Um, a certain script that they have to follow, but the director wouldn't call cut at the end of the scene. So they were just kind of like, well, I guess I have to say something. Yeah, and whatever out. comes out, I don't know, might or might not end up in the game. And it turns out that a lot of those little nuances ended up in this game. Which is interesting to me too, of just, again, demonstrating the um, influence of Naughty Dog in, a, in the Uncharted franchise. You know, I mean, obviously people make comparisons between the newer Tomb Raider games and Uncharted, which is funny because Uncharted was highly influenced from the older Tomb Raider <laughs> games. Um, but, you know, as far as I know, I believe that Naughty Dog were the first video game company to let actors kind of improvise and do that sort of thing. And, and you know, I remember, like, uh, Ashley Johnson... Or, you know, I remember there was a scene of like The Last of Us where uh, Joel's gonna wants to leave Ellie with his brother, and she's like says something like "Everybody's left me except for F and you," and she pushes him. And they said like that scene was completely improvised. Of like Ashley Johnson just pushed him, and it just added that much more yeah. effect. And so it's really amazing to see like other studios taking that on and, and letting actors kind of do their job. And it, it adds so much more weight and emotion to the performance that just some, you know, animators 
trying to just put together two characters and making them do something uh, doesn't really do, you know, it's just to capture what an actor can do, you know? Yeah. Definitely makes the game, like, way more relatable. And they also mentioned um, that they wanted to honor male and female um, friendships in yeah. the game because, I don't know. I'm sure you've dealt with this before, but yeah. like when you have a female friend, it could be kind of like you're, I don't know, mocked for it, taunted, and well, like, or like people are always trying to insinuate. Oh, that or insinuate that. Oh, out. yeah, I know why you guys are hanging out. But in, in this game, it, it's about um, what's his name again? Jonah. Jonah, and and Laura, and their friendship that is built over these past. Three games. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, the writer, uh, she even mentioned, and I think it's true too, that, like, really on any screen that's so rarely represented, you know, in movies and television or anything, mm -hmm. uh, of just a male female friendship, which I think is super important because. Because then it reduces the stigma associated yeah. with it. And, like, you know, one of the things Axel and I have in common is most of our lives we've had really close female friends, you know, and uh, some of my best friends yeah. are women, and um, it is it is really nice to kind of see that represented <laughs> for once, you know, that we're not always kind of at each other's throats or trying to mm -hmm. mate with each other, <laughs> <laughs> that you could have, like, a real friendship, a real platonic friendship. Yeah, I mean, it was just cool to see that there was, like, some intention behind that, yeah. I don't know, the scripting done between these two characters. So, uh, yeah, we could have just watched that for an hour. I, I feel bad that it kind of was only a half hour long. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that that's all we really have to say. Again, yeah. it comes out September 14th. And, um, yeah, I I think I'm even going to probably pre-order that game. Yeah. If there's, like, collector's editions and stuff, I would want that. And, uh, again, it's supposed to finish off this kind of trilogy. I don't think it's the last... No, it's not going to be the last <laughs> Tomb Raider game, but, you know, maybe after this they'll take maybe a it'll break. Maybe it'll be, like, a reboot after this one. I hope not. Yeah, me neither. I just hope that... Seems like they have a good flow going on. Yeah, I think maybe they would just take a break. I mean, uh, new Tomb Raider games come out last, you know, every two or three years for these last three games. Yeah. So maybe they'll probably take a break and maybe revisit it again, you know, sometime in the next generation. Yeah. Um, have old Tomb Raider, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> like old snake all right i'm not gonna get into metal gear anyway just be sure to watch our other videos um we have like a ton of coverage yeah. in almost like every conference or panel ever done um <laughs> in 2018 so, yeah, like share subscribe <laughs> and hit the bell um tell your mom tell your dad tell laura croft <laughs> And uh, NYC, geek out.